I just picked up these two Yamaha jet skis. I paid $200 for the two jet skis and those two trailers. So that's kind of like $50 a thing, which isn't bad. So on boats, the last two numbers are the VIN number of the year. So that makes this one an 88. And this one's a 500. And this one here is a 650. So that should be a little bit newer. That one's a 93. They're in pretty rough shape. You can see this um, this 650 here was last registered in 2011, so that's seven years ago. Well, that's a three-year registration too, so it was at least running ten years ago. And this one with an 05 sticker on it. And this one was at least running in 2002. I didn't get a ton, of, much of a story with them. I was dealing with the guy's employee. The guy who owned them wasn't even around, and... He kind of said something like they came with a house that he bought and they'd been sitting for years and they'd never really messed with them. Alright, so let's tear into them and see if we can get them running. Let's look at the motors first. So this, um, the hinges are broken on this thing. That thing, I gotta fix that. So here's the motor in this one. Now this one seems like it's seized up, so the first thing I'm going to do is pull the spark plugs out of there and get some oil sitting down in that. Let's jump right into it. Let's get let's start working on this 650.
All right, I'll let that set for a while. Hopefully that engine frees up. I just finished washing these two jet skis so I'm gonna work on this one first it seems like some better shape so the first thing to do is let me try to get this motor on C so you can actually get to the back of the drive shaft right there so I'm gonna put a wrench on that and try to turn it
All right, so let's put power to this thing and see if the starter can turn it over. So these wires get pulled out of here when this cover kept falling off. So let me put these back together. Let's jam it in there. That was easy. It won't run without this safety thing pulled up. There's a lanyard that's supposed to go in there. It's missing. All right, so I'll add a safety lanyard to the list of stuff I need if I get this running. All right, so we're now pushing. I have it hooked up with jumper cables here and pushing the start button. Oh, all right. I think the motor, it, it just needs a little help. This isn't great for the starter, but I see these starters new aftermarket on eBay for 30 bucks, so I, th I think I'll get it. Alright, the starter stopped doing stuff, so let me pull this exhaust off to get to it. <sighs> Man, that's tight. All right, so I thought this was the starter. It, here it is down in here under this thing. This is like, I guess that's the exhaust manifold you'd call that. Putting power to that will make it turn over. Let's see if it's a, uh, it'll tell me if it's an issue with the start button or solenoid or the actual starter. All right, so we know now that we have an issue with the starter solenoid or something and not the actual starter, so that's good though. All right, so the solenoid should be in this electrical box here. Let me get this off. component here probably went bad it's the solenoid all right let's still hook the power jump and it should start it I'm 
wants to go. It's so close. Alright, it's still not turning over. Let me let it, it's... I'll let that oil soak down in there. I'll take this carburetor off. I'm sure that needs attention. gonna pull this head off to try to free up this engine. This has got to come apart. I'm sure that needs a new diaphragm.
Oh, that ain't good. All right, another one broke. Well, I got one out without breaking it. Alright, so here's the solenoid off the other one. Just borrow it from that and attempt to in an attempt to ride this one this weekend. Alright, let's see if it works. I'm gonna hit the start button. All right, it was a blown fuse. Let me, I got another one of these bulb fuses. But that solenoid doesn't work either. All right, so I just ordered the carburetor rebuild kit, new solenoid, and a few other little parts it needed. So I guess now that the engine's freed up, this can go back on it. So it looks like they have like the torque specs and tightening order right on this thing, but I don't know. I'm just gonna tighten it with this. Good enough. Now let's see if it starts with some starting fluid.
I just welded that nut onto that broken thing. Oh, sh All right, that's two holes that are saved. I would just buy a new carburetor for this thing, but I look on online, there aren't any, so. I mean, there's some expensive used ones, but I love it when there's those new aftermarket carburetors for things. I mean, sometimes you, they're dirt cheap. So here's the carburetor from that jet ski. Now, I ordered a rebuild kit for it, but I had a few screws break off here, one here and one here, and I can't get them out of there. I could maybe drill and tap it, but a steel or a stainless steel screw and aluminum, the, the drill bit's always going to walk off. You know, I'm sure people are going to say easy out. I don't think that's going to work. So I went on the parts website from Yamaha. The carburetor was available. It was 400 that's more than I wanted to spend. But then I just kind of searched Minuki 44, or however you pronounce it. Yeah, Minuki. 44 millimeter carburetor. And then this came up. So this didn't say what it fit. It just... I don't think... I mean, it says Minuki on it. I feel like it's... Might be aftermarket or something, though. Like a counterfeit. I don't know. But it didn't say what it fit. But it looks... It looked identical in the photos... And now having them, you know, here they are together. You know, everything there looks the same. You know, the, this, this is off of here, but um, that looks the same. This is a drop different right here, how the choke hooks up. That's not a big deal. Here's this side. That looks the same. So, yeah, let me try putting this thing on it. This, I got, so I ended up getting this for like 170 bucks. So I didn't think that was bad. All right, let's go get that installed. All right, I had to put some automatic transmission fluid down in these cylinders just to try to free them up a little better. Let me get it out of there. Well, it turns over nice and easy. All right, let's put that carburetor on it. All right, I wish I had this new gasket. Uh, cause this one ripped, but all right, that that should be fine. All right, I'm just gonna use this choke lever off the old carburetor because they're a little different. All right, the carburetor stuff is together enough. Now let's take a look at this fuel tank. Well, it doesn't look like there's any water in there, which is good. It's a lot greener than it should be though, but. I got most of that gas out of there. You know, at least there was no water in there. If there was water in there, I'd have to 
where the tank was nasty, I would take the tank out and pressure wash it and get it perfect. You know, the gas in there was old, but it wasn't... One thing I still don't have is the solenoid for this. All right, some new mixed gas. wants to. the gas on on how about how's that sound see right here it was on off we're gonna put it on on we're gonna see if that helps but she's gonna run you can feel it She runs. All right, let's put some more stuff together on it.
get something under there. Mm All right, so I just got this jet ski registered. A lot of times when you're looking at jet skis for sale in this price range, like $50, most of the time the previous owner lost the registration. That doesn't mean you can't register them, it's just a little more work at the DMV. I made a list of all the forms that they want because I just did it a couple times this year, so I can usually get it done within maybe one, maybe two trips to the DMV. So they want, a bill of sale from the previous, the person who had it, signed, put the VIN number on it, the date, um, form DTF802, form MV82B, an etching or a photo of the VIN number on the jet ski, and form MV51B, and just fill those out as best you can. Um, some of them need to be signed by the person who had the jet ski, so if you're buying something like this, just bring all the forms with you so you can get the person that you're getting it from to sign where they need to sign. All right, so other gear that's required with this jet ski. Now this could vary state to state, but it only took me a second on Google to see what they want. On, uh, in New York, you're supposed to have a life jacket. You're supposed to have a whistle or an air horn, you know, something to make a sound. You're supposed to have a Distress flag, so here's one that's you know an orange flag with a black square you know, and a black square in a circle. And this is definitely good to have. I've been broken down in the past and other boats have been near me and you know you wave this, you know, usually it's just um, just a tow back to shore or something is nice, but Alright, so if you fall off if you fall off this will stop the engine and the jet ski won't just drive away from you when you're swimming. So that's required. And two other things I was surprised about, I always thought you needed an anchor. So like here's an example of what you carry, this is a folding anchor. Um, but it said not required. And the other thing was a fire extinguisher, I always thought that was required. Uh, I guess not, I have one in here, I, you know, here's a brand new one, so, but that's not required. But yeah. I was ready to take this out, it's got one more issue that arose once I got it running. and. Um, you can kind of hear it. Let me start it back up. Let's start it up. Listen for that rattling sound when it's running. Well, that was actually really obvious that time. So the impeller drive shaft. I know there's a ton of play in it. It needs to be rebuilt. So I got the new parts. All right, so this is what I just ordered. Hopefully that's what's actually wrong with it. Let's uh, take it apart and try to get that fixed.
All these bolts are different lengths, so I'm writing got got long ones, got medium ones, and these are two short ones. So I got that out. I think this section here has got to come out too, and that happens under the hood. All right, this is what's going on here. That thing's got a bad bearing in it. It needs to come out. I can't get it out. The motor's got to move for that to come out. And um, this is what I'm thinking happened. This jet ski was running probably years ago, and that bearing went bad. And whoever owned the jet ski just gave up on it and never fixed it, and that's why it started sitting. Let's uh, unbolt this motor. And it's got these shims that gotta go back in the same spots on the motor mounts. All right, I got all the motor mounts unbolted. The two on this side broke though, so but let's see if I, I just need to move this motor forward a little bit. Well, there's the old bearings. All right, let's see how to fix this thing. So, you can see the bearings in there are gone. All right. Kind of looks like this piece is part of this piece. I mean, I don't see any type of a, a gap or seam in there. So, if that's the case, this thing's hot. This has got to come out of here. All right. So this is what's going on with this uh, bearing housing. So I kind of messed this up. Um, the mistake I made, this piece was threaded onto here. I didn't realize it. It was like one in the morning. I was trying to like press it off and I cracked this. I mean, not a big deal. This, these are available. I mean, you could maybe even straighten that out and run it. But um, the other thing I did, you know, that could be filled, that's savable, but really I need a bearing puller to pull this inner race off of this shaft. Um, this, and then plus this housing, all these ears are cracked. I didn't do that, it was like that, but you know, you could probably still run this thing, but um, you know, here's the bearings for it. I may try to fix it at some point, but you know what? I just bought a whole new assembly, a good used one on eBay, you know, rather than waste a bunch of time with that. And now I'm just ready to put this thing back together. So, all right, let's get this installed in the machine and put it all back together. And it's got this grease fitting here. So let me just make sure it takes grease while it's all out. 
Yeah, that's taking grease fine. So, you know, keeping that greased, if the previous owner had, had kept this one greased, this machine probably would have never even been broken. So that's important to keep that greased. I mean, when this is in the machine, it's hard to get to, but it's supposed to have this cover that goes, goes on it and covers it up, and then it, it hides that grease fitting. So I don't think I'm gonna reinstall this cover because it's like, you know, then you don't even know that grease fitting's there. All right, cool, that's in. So it would be time to just put the motor back, but I had a few motor mounts break, so let me try to change those. Right, here's a good used motor mount. I just ran a uh, tap through it. That's good. You know, what? let me get the back front one out first. All right, we just finished bolting all the motor mounts back in. So that, that was kind of hard to do. We put all the shims back in the same spot, except for this one. But uh, the output shaft spins, you know, that's not binding or anything, so I feel fine about it. All right, just time to put the jet drive back in. Borrowed that off that other jet ski. That's why it wasn't in there. So there's no threads left in there. I could just use three bolts. All right, that's a little crazy, but that'll be fine.
So this trailer needs to be fixed. This was hitting the bottom of the jet ski here and here. Alright, so the 650 is all finished and ready for its first trip out. So, about to go test it. I just picked up this Kawasaki too. I actually paid money for this one. I paid a thousand bucks so I didn't have to do anything to it. Or much to it. I had to do a few things to it. And I got this double trailer. Um, so just a quick update on this 500. I did mess with it. The motor to it is right here. And it's really seized up. I mean, I, I'm sure I could free it up, but I'd have to disassemble the entire motor to get it freed up. So I'm not jumping into that right this second. You know, it's getting towards the end of the season. Plus, there's so many of these on Craigslist or Marketplace for, like, under $200 that they say, oh, runs on starting fluid. And that's... That's an easy fix, you know, it's probably just a carburetor and then a bunch of other miscellaneous things. You know, when they're seized up bad, it's kind of a pain. But, um, so I may pick up a few more of them, especially since it's the end of the season and you can usually get them really cheap. But then, you know, my yard will start looking like, with jet skis, like it does with snowmobiles. You know what, there's, uh, five right here. And then another five of them over there, so, you know, I don't know how many. I do have three running jet skis right now. You know, I have another one of these 500s. Just like that, that runs pretty good. Alright, so let's uh let's take this thing out. <laughs> 